West Ham in the Cup against non-league Farnborough. And in these troubled times at Upton Park, there's apprehension about today's visit of 4th Division Wrexham, especially as West Ham today field a team of walking wounded. Four of these players are carrying injuries, including the goalkeeper Ludo Miklosko. And number six, Mitchell Thomas, and number seven, Kevin Keane, are asked today to play in centre midfield because four other first-team players are unavailable. Since Wrexham's giant killers accounted for Arsenal, manager Brian Flynn has had a steady stream of inquiries about the younger members of his side, but so far, at least, they remain intact. It's the same 11, and they'll rely heavily again on the two veterans. Number five, Mickey Thomas, whose free kick helped to defeat Arsenal, and number seven, Gordon Davis, who's recovered from food poisoning yesterday. The referee today, Colin Trussell of Liverpool. And as Wrexham in the light shirts kick off the pitch at Upton Park in perfect condition, having been covered during the overnight frost, it's soft on top and was even watered this morning. Brian Flynn thought about putting himself on the bench for this match. He hasn't played for a year. This is uh, Slater. Supported by Julian Dix. Watkin. Hit by Phillips. The intention was to pick out Gordon Davis. And McAvenny managed to squeeze it out. Breakers come from right back. He's got the ball into the penalty area. And it came off Mickey Thomas. First corner. He's a great athlete, uh, Tim Breaker. And if Wrexham give him the opportunity to make runs down that right side, they'll see a lot of the West Ham number two. Mickey Thomas, the captain, organising defence. And it's Julian Dix who's gone across to take it. Colin Foster's come up from the back. Oh, a header for number 10, Trevor Morley. He didn't really meet it right. Wrexham might worry, though, about the amount of space they allowed Morley. on by Davis, this is Watkin Foster can give this back to Miklosko Miklosko injured a hamstring in the 1-0 win at Luton last week and the word doubts that he might not play today Sandy Thackeray and that's a great sprint by Connolly and he got a touch as well that was a bit lax by West Ham. They really hadn't seen Carl Connolly start that long diagonal run from the left. He got to the ball first and maybe would have done better to have swung with his right foot. Ten minutes gone. And that came off Foster. West Ham's victory over non-league Farnborough in the third round was far from convincing. Held 1-1 here at Upton Park. And then only winning 1-0. And there's Davis in here. Oh, McCloskey saved it with his legs. But in fact, it wouldn't have counted. The linesman had put his flag up on the far side. But again, there was more than a hint of uncertainty about the West Ham defence. Ball came off Gordon Owen. Davis got a touch. Miklosko saved it with his legs. Then Dix. In fact, the flag had gone up. Keane. Slater. Dix has made the overlap. It's just Morley and McAvenny in the penalty area. Be cleared by Carey. Keane! Oh, it was well taken by Kevin Keane. Diminutive former England youth international began as an apprentice at West Ham. And that clearing header by Carey didn't really get far enough. Just to the edge of his own penalty area. Keane to Foster who again has forayed forward. 
goes for handball against Mickey Thomas, seen by Mr. Trussell, and that gives West Ham their third free kick. Slater, faced by Thackeray, crosses with his right foot, Morley missed it, Foster didn't, but O'Keefe saved, and if Morley had made a proper contact there, as it looked as though he would, West Ham would have taken the lead. Slater chose to cross that time with his right foot, and there was no pace behind it in the end, but that was a let-off. Flanks up on the far side, and the referee waves play on. Slater. Still Slater, gets away from Owen. Slater, oh, great shot by Stuart Slater, who hasn't yet scored this season for West Ham. Good run forward, got away from Gareth Owen, and with players backing off him, lashed it across the face of goal. Connolly, Gordon Davis, Mickey Thomas, in the end, delivered only to Potts. Dix. Oh, it was a poor ball from Julian Dix. Zoen is pursuing and trying to make amends, but it's come out to Watkin. And Dix was haunted by two of them. Owen was there, Davies was just behind him, and again West Ham look a little bit nervous. Gordon Davis. Oh, he was trying to tee it up for Phillips. Again, hesitation. Davis. Oh, important foot in by Julian Dix. He tied it up twice there. And it looked as though Gordon Davis may inspire Wrexham and prize open this. First Division defence. Billy Bonds played till he was 41, but these days he can only sit and watch. Been in the manager's chair at West Ham for almost two years now. Dix with the free kick. Carey's jump is penalised. Though McAvenny didn't try to get off the ground. And it was uh, a controversial free kick from a not dissimilar situation, which, remember, led to Wrexham's goal against Arsenal, scored by Mickey Thomas. Five in the wall. It's Julian Dix who's placed the ball. Kevin Keane's just to the left of him. And it's Keane who hits it. It was well struck, but it needed a good save from Vince O'Keefe. Put it right over the top of the wall, and it was one-handed, just touched over the bar. Corner to West Ham. season, but where was the man who was supposed to mark him? Well, that's a blow for Wrexham, having seen their keeper make a wonderful save to concede the corner. They've got a goal down. Slater. Sit back from Morley. Still Slater. Also a good run by the youngster. Benny got his back to goal, Keane. Well, McAvenny had his back to goal when that came across. He tried to set it back for Kevin Keane. But it was just a little bit too wide of him. And Morley got another touch. But here come West Ham again. Kevin Keane from a long way out. Oh, and it was just drifting wide. At this moment, West Ham have their tails up.
A second goal to follow that opener by Dix may well kill off the fourth division opposition in this first half. The board at West Ham under fire from their supporters because of the controversial bond scheme. Although no sign as yet of any of the threatened demonstrations. Or oh, Mickey Thomas! Davis couldn't quite get on the end of it. It just needs one moment from somebody like Davis or Mickey Thomas or a moment's relaxation in defence. And Wrexham could yet prove to be more difficult opponents than it appears at the, this particular stage. Didn't get the right connection, Mickey Thomas, but it was only just ahead of Gordon Davis. Hardy. Phillips. Julian Dix. McAvenny got it out nicely to Trevor Morley. Slater got a round Owen. O'Keefe started to come and changed his mind. McAvenny! Oh, it's right under the bar. Mitchell Thomas came in. He didn't get a connection with O'Keefe off his line. And that'll be a free kick against Foster. But it looked as though, first of all, McAvenny was going to score. The save from O'Keefe was instinctive. It's his breaker. Mickey Thomas concedes the throw. Keane with a lot of space. And he's able to pick up speed and run at people. And Wrexham survive again. Well, how good a save was this by Vince O'Keefe? Header down was by Carey, right to the feet of McAvenny, who hit it first time, a toe poke into O'Keefe's chest, and then he got it up right under the crossbar, and Mitchell Thomas came in and didn't win it against a player who was three or four inches shorter than him, Phil Hardy. Slater. To run at Thackeray, Slater scooped it. So wide of target, it's gone for a throw-in. Foster. Dispossessed. Mickey Thomas. There's nobody up front to hit. Connolly. Watkin. Oh. He looked at Owen and then took his eye off him. And by the time he slipped the ball through, the player had covered. Julian Dix. Try again. And again, Brian Carey clears. He's having a good game in the centre of that Wrexham defence, the number four. And O'Keefe has made a couple of stops as well. Just over two minutes to go to half-time as Kevin Keane prepares to take this corner. Still only 1-0. Foster up from the back. keeps coming and he's only able to punch and that's a goal kick Dix felt that it came off a defender and should have been a corner and the whistle goes to end the first half in which the scenario is very similar to the Wrexham match against Arsenal, the first division team having most of the play, making most of the scoring chances, but with only the one goal from Julian Dix to show for it. So at half-time at Upton Park, it's West Ham 1, Wrexham 0. Ken Brown here to watch his 24-year-old son, Kenny, wearing the number nine shirt. Wrexham haven't won an away match in 15 months and as West Ham start the second half that's the enormity of the task they have here a goal down at Upton Park where incidentally they've never won in four attempts two draws, two defeats in the matches that Wrexham have played here against the Hammers Davis Foster took it away from Watkin Breaker 
why the side has made a substitution at half-time. McAvenny took it nicely away from Carey. And he goes through two of them. He's got round Satori, who stuck to the task well. Uh, McAvenny might have felt uh, the attention he got from Mark Satori was a little bit close, but the big number six kept him shoulder to shoulder. Nothing in it for McAvenny. Just the two forward. Watkin and Davis. Nicky Thomas and Phillips got in each other's way. Thackeray came off the West Ham player. As long as it remains at 1-0, Wrexham are conscious that there's always a chance of getting back. Foster's header, Watkin, pushed off Dix, Thackeray, well that's the right back in the penalty area, and I'm sure that uh, Brian Flynn has obviously told his players to get forward a bit more often in this second half and look for the equaliser. And they're making it difficult for West Ham has now conceded a free kick. This is Brown. Breaker. The shoot by Hardy. Gets in a lovely cross. Satori who concedes the corner. Just over ten minutes gone in the second half. That's Morley. O'Keefe making himself as big as he can. Keen will take it. Oh, the marking was poor again for the player coming in from the edge of the penalty area. That time it was Colin Foster. And very similar to the corner which led to the goal by Julian Dix. A player making a run from the edge of the penalty area and nobody had picked him up. Kenny Brown. Oh, misunderstanding again. And West Ham are just finding it a little bit difficult to put things together quite the same way that they did in the first half. Mickey Thomas. Header down for Watkin. Gordon Davis. Thackeray. And it's finally into the hands of Miklosko, but there was half an opening, half a chance, and again, Thackeray had got forward from right back. Let's not forget that the Wrexham number 10, Steve Watkin, only had one sniff of goal in that third round match against Arsenal and scored the crucial one that put them out. Davis tried to work space, it didn't quite work out. And Mikosko took a knock as he went down against Andy Thackeray. Poor kick. Davis. This is Thackeray up from the back again. Phillips. Wayne Phillips and Wrexham have done it again. Look at the smile on the face of Brian Flynn. That's their support. And can they do it twice? Well, they dumped Arsenal out in what was heralded as one of the greatest FA Cup shocks of all time. And they've taken the game to West Ham in the second half. Maybe a fortunate rebound, but didn't Phillips do well? How did he get his foot on that? 16 minutes gone in the second half, it's 1-1, in fact it came off the back of his own player. But he lashed it in, his third of the season. And Billy Bonds decides to make that substitution. 14, Mike Small, their top goal scorer, with 15 this season, coming on to replace number eight, Frank McAvenny, who had a bit of a knock last week, and may not have fully recovered. That'll be a, a straightforward swap. Small jogs out to take an attacking position. Oh, the lines was flagged on the far side for a foul against the Tory. It's right on the edge of the penalty area. The referee didn't give it. He responded to the flag from his linesman. 
now Kevin Keane struck a beauty in the first half which O'Keefe did well to save it's a worrying moment for Brian Flynn everybody back for Wrexham Breaker leaves it, Keane tees it up for Dix. But Wrexham have survived, it's still one apiece. And less than 20 minutes to play. In fact, the shot from Dix was going hopelessly wide before it took a rebound. Owen. Morley, they've all lost it, Brown, oh, it just drifted away, look when he first hit it as though that was going to go in, it beat O'Keefe, somehow, maybe just moved in the air, and seemed to drift away from the far post, in fact, O'Keefe may have actually got his fingers on it, but a corner was given, O'Keefe came and he lost it! Morley claims it! 15 minutes left, West Ham back in front. What a relief. Morley's fifth of the season, and maybe O'Keefe committed himself here. He comes off his line and he doesn't get a fist on it, and there's nobody back on the goal line to make a save. 2-1, West Ham. Carl Conley makes way for number 12, Lee Jones. So a 22-year-old replaced by an 18-year-old. Boy, who made his debut in the European Cup Winners' Cup tie against Manchester United last season. A young striker with a great future. Already a Welsh under-21 international. with about 13 minutes left to make an impact. Keane. Strong tackle by Satori. And another free kick given. Oh, good strong play. And that'll fall over the top to Walker. No, he's there. Great finisher. He's oh, he's not done it. He had two chances, and that was Wrexham's opportunity with ten minutes left. But they didn't beat Miklosko, and it couldn't have fallen to a better player from Wrexham's point of view. Their top scorer, Steve Watkin, and he had two chances and didn't manage to score. Shoot by Hardy and Phillips. Tattle went in from Carey. This is Breaker. This is Brown. Breaker surge down the right. Small to look for. But Keith looks favourite. And in fact, the whistle's gone for a foul, although the keeper won it anyway. Well, this is a great opportunity for Watkin. You'd have put your money on him scoring. And how quickly did Miklosko get back on his feet? Although I think it was Breaker who actually stopped the second one. Slater. Skipped over the tackle by Owen. Still Slater. Finally dispossessed. Graham Owen. Gareth Owen, rather. Oh, that's over the top of the youngster, Lee Jones. Is he going to be the hero? He is, he scored! The man who's just come on as a substitute. 18 years of age, and it's 2-2. The Welsh Dragons are waved. There are eight minutes left. Lee Jones has got the equaliser minutes after coming on as a substitute he was always outstripping Tim Breaker he's got much more youth in his legs he put it under the 
dive of Mikrosko. What a turnaround. And what a fantastic FA Cup campaign. Wrexham are enjoying. Mikrosko took a little bit of the pace off it, but he couldn't keep it out. Costa. Fox comes across to help. There's no way back to the keeper. Has to concede the throw. It's going to be a desperate finish for West Ham. Phillips hoisted up, Miklosko changed his mind. Mickey Thomas, blocked by Breaker. This is Owen. And ball appeals. The throw is given. You can sense the nerves and the uncertainty in West Ham. That would have been on target from Mickey Thomas. Well into stoppage time. Small is the time for one last dramatic finish. Brown. Breaker. Chipped over the top for Morley. Oh, there are appeals. Referees had none of it. Colin Trussell has run away. Feeling perhaps for a handball against uh, Andy Thackeray. So, having achieved the sensation of the third round by putting out the champions Arsenal, Wrexham from the fourth division now within seconds of the result of the fourth round. Referees checking his watch, the linesman of both signal. goal for either side in the last few seconds would seem a little bit unfair, it's been a really entertaining match and Wrexham have twice come back from being behind Vince O'Keefe won't be in any hurry that's it, the whistle is gone Brian Flynn's 4th Division Wrexham gets a little Pat on the cheek there from Billy Bonds, and don't they deserve it? And what a hero in substitute Lee Jones on the field for just five minutes before he knocked in the equaliser in a memorable 2-2 draw. And West Ham will have to go to the racecourse ground a week on Tuesday to face what is certain to be a very awkward replay. Well, another.